The weather is only perfect in Tempe, Arizona. Not a cloud in the sky, 72 degrees at kickoff. As a pair of three and eight teams go head to head, the Phoenix Cardinals play host to the Los Angeles Rams. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, along with the coach, Hank Stram, and it's great to have you with us. These two teams in identical situations, each needing to win its last five games to finish the season at the 500 mark. And both teams think that is a realistic goal. For the Rams, they're going to turn over the quarterback range for the rest of the season to T.J. Rubley. Yeah, I think they feel they have to do that. They have to find out what Rubley can do. And if he's the guy for the future, that's fine. But they have to find out. If he isn't, they have to get somebody else. The running back of the future is the running back of the present, Jerome Bettis. The rookie leads all NFL rookies in rushing with 776 yards. These two teams went head-to-head -head last year in Anaheim. The Cardinals won by six points, and a big problem for Los Angeles was that they could not contend with the big defensive front of Phoenix, the front four defensive line averaging 319 pounds per minute. They are big. And for that reason, I think it's going to be very important for the Rams to start the game by trying to run outside instead of running straight ahead. If they run outside, they might be able to tire those big guys out as the game goes along, and it might be more helpful to them from a running standpoint. Tony Zendejas will kick off as Phoenix won the toss and elected to receive. Eric Blunt, number 25. And Anthony Edwards, 83, to return the kickoff. Edwards standing at the five. Blunt back deep for the injured Johnny Bailey, who is inactive today with a groin injury. <laughs> Bailey was a Pro Bowl return man last year, but not in action for the Cardinals. The Rams trying to end the losing skid. They've dropped six of their last seven. And we're underway in Tempe. Very little breeze to speak of. A good kick three yards deep, but Blunt will bring it out. And he's out to the 22-yard line. Tackled by Chris Martin and Brett Collins. Steve Berline in his first year with Phoenix is the starting quarterback. Luis Sharp, Joe Wolf, Ed Cunningham, Lance Smith, and Rick Cunningham. The offensive line, Wolf starting for the injured Mark May. It's a one-back offense, and the back is Ron Moore. Gary Clark and Ricky Prohl, the wideouts, Reeves, the tight end, centers the H-back. 28-year-old Steve Berline in his sixth year out of Notre Dame. Larry Centers goes in motion. And the quick hitter completes to Clark. He eluded one tackler and made his way to the 37-yard line. Good for a Phoenix first down. A gain of 15. Fred Stokes, Sean Gilbert, Mark Boutte, and Tony Woods, the defensive front for the Rams. Shane Conlon anchors the linebacking core. He's in his first year with the Rams. And it is a beleaguered secondary due to injuries. Israel Newman, Stewart, and Henderson, the starters. Phoenix thinks they can pick on the corners, and they wasted no time. Yeah, I think we're going to see an awful lot of that. And then basically, you know, they line up in an eight-man front sometimes. A lot of people on the line of scrimmage. Ron Moore, the rookie out of Pittsburgh, state of Kansas, a Division II school who has taken over as the main ball carrier for Phoenix with Garrison Hurst out for the season with a knee injury. He made his way to the 43, a pickup of six on first down for the Cards. Yeah, and he averages about 13 carries a game and has averaged four yards per carry, but he's a strong guy, good balance, good leverage. Four, five, 10, 220 pounds. And they run a play flicker. Moore pitched it back to Burnline who lost the football. And the Cardinals cover it back at the 38. Loss of five on the play. Lance Smith, the nine-year veteran out of LSU, came up with the fumble. Watch what happens here now. See, they fake the play. They like to run so much. Then he tosses it back. Moore does. Back to Burline. But there's a leak. A slow leak in the outside to hit from the backside. And there's a fumble on the ball. Right off the bat, but fortunately for the Cardinals, they get it back. It was Fred Stokes who knocked the ball loose. Third down and nine for the Cardinals. First possession of the football game. Erline, pressure. And throws, caught for a first down. Clark again, out of bounds at the 50-yard line. A gain of 13. Erline does a good job of uh, stepping aside and getting rid of the football. 
I think, you know, we mentioned that earlier. I think we're going to see an awful lot of that if they have a soft corner on either side. They're really going to attack that area. Steve Berline returned to action last week against the Giants after missing two games with a sprained right knee. He's wearing a big, bulky brace on that right knee that limits his mobility. Back to the run with Moore, and he slips down for no gain. Mark Boutte will be credited with the tackle. Moore lost his footing as he tried to cut. The Bears. And Vikings, winners today in the NFC Central. Minnesota pitched a shutout. The Lions failed to score without Barry Sanders. Two hot teams going head-to-head -head as Jerry Glanville returned to the Astrodome, and he's been greeted rudely by his former team. Cleveland trying to get its first win since Bernie Kosar departed. And New England's only win was against the Cardinals. Raiders and Buffalo locked in a great one at Rich Stadium. On second and ten, Burline pressured again. He ran away from Boutte and throws to a wide open Ricky Prohl. He would have scored a touchdown had the throw not been right along the sideline. He struggled to stay in bounds. The play goes to the 12, 38 yards for Phoenix and a first down. And Burline did a good job of, of, of moving the pocket, escaping from the pressure. And he and he throws the ball downfield and he wants to keep make sure that he doesn't get any uh, help from the inside from the safety so he keeps it outside had it thrown a little bit more inside look at this pressure in the inside he jumps to the outside throws the ball on the move and gets it down there nicely but he tries to keep it outside and it was uh, just far enough outside where he couldn't get it and run for a touchdown Moore nearly ran for a touchdown he was tripped up at the three-yard line. Anthony Newman, the free safety, prevented the touchdown. A gain of nine for Ron Moore. An impressive opening drive for Phoenix. No score. Ten and a half minutes to be played in the first quarter. The Rams haven't touched the ball yet. Second and one. They can pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown. Erline had them moving with the cadence. Moore driven ahead by the Rams. Roman Pfeiffer in making the tackle actually moved him toward the goal line. It might have been enough to pick up the first down. Despite the movement along the line, there was no flag on the play. And the Cardinals do have a first down. First and goal at the one. Good, good time right here for a play action pass on first and one. Here it is again now. Here's a run back. Look at it, makes a good move. Bumps into his own guy on the right side. But he fights for extra yardage and makes the first down. Play action to be super here. Let's see what they do. They give it a more. Trying to pull it in. Touchdown. Well, they made it look easy, didn't they? Indeed, they did. Nine plays on the drive, 78 yards. It took five minutes and 26 seconds, and it's capped by the one-yard plunge by Moore, his third touchdown of his career. And that should be a great confidence builder for the Cardinals. And not the way Chuck Knox hoped to begin the afternoon. Greg Davis to try the point on the hold of Burline. And Davis remains perfect in PATs this season. He's 23 for 23. An impressive opening drive capped by the one-yard touchdown run by Ron Moore. 9.34 left in the first quarter. 7-0 Phoenix. Ron Moore, the touchdown, and Phoenix leads 7 to nothing. The Rams, 26th of the National Football League against the pass, and Phoenix came out throwing on that drive. 65 of the 78 yards came in the air. Burline was 3 for 3 on the opening drive. And the nice thing about it is they didn't make any mistakes with the exception of the first fumble, but fortunately for them, they recovered it and went right down to, right down to score. So Greg Davis will kick off. Daryl Boykin and Mitchell Price. 
It's to the goal line and handled by Boykin. And he's in trouble. Taken down at the 13-yard line. Larry Centers, Garth Jacks, and Anthony Edwards combining along the sideline. T.J. Rubley making his third start as an NFL quarterback. His first two against San Francisco. He's 0-2 as a starter. Patchwork offensive line with Tom Newbery and Jackie Slater out. Their replacements are Keith Lonaker and Daryl Ashmore. Jerome Bettis will be the main ball carrier. Lester the blocking back. Anderson and Elwood, the veteran wide receivers, and Pat Carter, the tight end. T.J. Rubley, 25 years old. In his second year out of Tulsa. Passes to Bettis on first down. Bettis into the secondary. And close to a first down at the 23-yard line. And Bettis is an excellent runner, but he better learn when he runs to the left to make sure he carries the ball on the left arm, not the right arm. He got the pursuit is coming from that inside angle. And with that ball in that right arm like that, he pop right out of there if he's not careful. Officially a gain of nine for Jerome Bettis, the rookie out of Notre Dame. Like an eight-man front up there, a lot of people. And on second and one, they hand it off to Lester, who pulled ahead for the first down across the 25-yard line. The Cardinals defense, we spoke of the enormous Front four, Jones, Rucker, Davis, and Baxter average 319 pounds a bit. Tyrone Stoll and Eric Hill, the linebackers, they are the two leading tacklers on this big nickel defense, as the Cardinals call it. They call it the big nickel because they play the nickel as their base defense, five defensive backs. They welcome the return of John Booty, who's missed the last four games due to an ankle injury. Rudely. Dumps it off, incomplete. Looking for Henry Ellert, and off his hand, fell to the ground. And Lynch was blitzing on the play. They play with two corners and three safeties. Look at Rubley going back into the pocket. He gets some pressure, looking downfield. Can't make up his mind. Good coverage downfield. Decides to take off and run with the football, and dumps it off and gets hit from the backside. Lorenzo Lynch, the strong safety, gave him a pretty good punt. Second and ten. The Rams trail seven to nothing. Eight minutes left in the first quarter. The first penalty of the afternoon. Or check that timeout call by Phoenix just before the ball was snapped. Seven nothing Phoenix will return to Sun Devil Stadium right after this. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Levi's loose fitting jeans. Coca Cola Classic, always the real thing, always Coca Cola. And by Canon, a world leader in 35 millimeter photography. Not only is it a beautiful day in the neighborhood, it's a busy day in the neighborhood. You're looking just down the street from Sun Devil Stadium at the Mill Avenue Merchants Association Arts and Crafts Fair. About 40,000 people inside the stadium and several thousand others enjoying the exhibits just down the street. On second and ten, following the Phoenix timeout, they toss it to Bennis, and he drives ahead to the 30-yard line. A gain of four, tackled by... Michael Bankston, the left defensive end. Well, that's the second time they've run outside, and both times they've succeeded in making good yardage. We talked about this a little earlier in the broadcast, but that's that's something, something that they have to do a lot of, I think, in this game to move the ball against this uh, Phoenix defense because of their size. Cleveland, a winner at home against New Orleans. And Pittsburgh fell behind early, another very tough loss for New England. And the Raiders held on to beat Buffalo. Indianapolis over the Jets. Washington gets its third win for Richard Pettibone. On third down, Rubley running for his life. Chased by Rucker. Right along the sideline, throws deep for Ellard. Contact! It is a juggling catch! Had he been able to handle it, he would have gone in for a touchdown. There is a flag on the play. 
where the contact was made in the secondary. If the play stands, it's all the way down to the 17-yard line, and it would be a gain of 54. The question is, who is the flag against? And you did you see Rucker take off and chase? Number 79. Pass interference. Number 42. Defense is declined. First down. John Booty guilty of pass interference. They turned it down to take the 54-yard gain. Johnny Greer is the referee today. Now watch Rubley back in the pocket. Now Rucker comes into the picture. Now watch him. Watch right in here. Look, there he is, number 79. He's chasing, gets a piece of, didn't make the tackle. He throws the ball downfield. And a nice play on it. Look at the pass interference. Very, very obvious. The ball was in the air. He hit the receiver. Very obvious, a penalty. Looking to throw, and Cleveland Gary did throw. Complete short of a first down. Out of bounds at the eight-yard line. He hit Troy Drayton, one of the three Rams tight ends, Michael Zordich. Knocked him out of bounds after a gain of eight. Well, one of the things T.J. Rubley told us last night, Hank, was mindful of that huge defensive line. He thought his scrambling ability might help tire those guys out. Certainly, it couldn't have been too much fun for Rucker, 348 pounds, to be in pursuit of Mr. Rubley all over the field. But he was ready flying, wasn't he, for as big as he is? Second and two, Bettis cuts back to pick up the first down. He's at the five-yard line. The Rams will have it first and goal from the five. Again, it was Michael Bangston who made the tackle. Bettis averaging four and a half yards per carry. He's fifth in the NFC, sixth in the NFL in rushing with those 776 yards coming in. As we mentioned, tops among rookies. And Chuck Knox said the thing he likes most about Bettis is his ability to gain yards after that initial contact. Well, that's the important thing about a back. Determine how many guys miss him after he gets hit the first time. Bettis again. Didn't get much. Crossed the five, and that's all. Reuben Davis led the defensive surge for Phoenix, number 93. And Bettis, don't, people don't realize Bettis weighs 245. We have an old Reuben there, weighs 340. We talked with Reuben yesterday, he used to play for Tampa Bay, he said when Sam Weich came in, he wanted Reuben to get down to about 290 pounds, and Reuben just couldn't do it. Finally, he wound up getting traded to Phoenix, and Reuben said, I knew I'd fit in the very first day when I arrived in Phoenix, when I looked around the practice field and saw the 300-pounders plus. And he liked the food. He was impressed with the food, too, wasn't he? <laughs> it was indeed. Rubley, incomplete. Should have been caught. Might have been a little too hot for Troy Drayton to handle as he crossed the field at about the two-yard line. I think the other thing is very important uh, when you have a big playing against a big defensive line like the Cardinals line, I think play-action passes are very, very important, especially on first down. Phoenix leads seven to nothing. They went 78 yards on the first possession of the football game, and the Rams try to match it with an impressive opening march of their own. They're facing third and goal from the five. Rubley with plenty of time, incomplete. Broken up by Lorenzo Lynch, who was intended for Henry Ellard, and the Rams will settle for a field goal try. One on one on the outside. Now look at he stops in the end zone, breaks to the outside. And Lynch really gets a good jump on the ball. It's thrown low, but he gets a great jump on the ball. No chance whatsoever in making that perception. This will be a 22 yard try for Zendejas. Rubley is the new holder. Zendejas has gone through a couple of holders lately. But no problem on the exchange there. And the Rams are on the board with a 22-yarder for Tony Zendejas. 4.46 left in the first quarter. It's a four-point Cardinal lead. Next Saturday, it's NCAA basketball on CBS as the Duke Blue Devils take on the Michigan Wolverines. Coverage begins at 10 a.m. Pacific. 
Then the NFL on CBS features the San Francisco 49ers and the Atlanta Falcons beginning at 12.30 Pacific with the NFL today. That's all next Saturday here on CBS Sports. Sean McDonough with Hank Stram at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Each team has had it once, and each team has scored once. And the Cardinals lead 7-3 as Zendejas booms one to the back of the end zone. And Eric Blunt stepped out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. That ball looked like it had a string on it. <laughs> Didn't it? Just like a big balloon. Steve Berline, perfect on the opening drive. Three for three. All three passes to wide receivers. Two to Gary Clark, one to Ricky Kroll. Been a frustrating first year. Came to Phoenix, quarterback Joe Bugles Club as a free agent. Received big money. But it's been a three and eight mark for Phoenix. A series of narrow, frustrating defeats, including last week's at the Meadowlands when the Giants beat the Cardinals 19 to 17 on a 54 yard field goal in the final minute. The pass batted down by Tony Woods. He came close to intercepting that ball, too. Both corners were very, very soft in that last play, Sean, and I was surprised, really, he just didn't go back in the pocket and throw the ball out there, let him catch it, and make the guy make an open field tackle. First incompletion for Burline, second and 10 for the Cardinals. From their own 20 with 4.36 left in the first quarter. Now they ought to go up on top. They got bump and run. They got a chance for a big play. They're backing off now. And they hand it off to Moore. He slithered up the middle for four out to the 24. Tripped up by Sean Gilbert. Sean Gilbert was the biggest concern for the Phoenix coaching staff. In terms of the Rams defense, he's great against the run and against the pass. Yes, and they said they had to uh, change some of their blocking scheme to make sure that they handled him. I think it's important, too, for the Cardinals, as much as the defense tries to disguise what they do, to go on quick counts. They had a chance, had to go on a quick count with bump and run. Here they got it again. Now they got double coverage. They're changing it. On third and five. Burline running out of time and throws complete. Gary Clark out to the 40. Tackled by Anthony Newman, but it's another first down for Phoenix, a gain of 15. And the important thing about that play was the fact that the pass protection was excellent. Pass protection was very, very good. He goes back into the pocket with a five-step drop. Look, at there's some pressure there by Gilbert, but he gets rid of the football in good shape, and it's a completion. Makes a good outside inside move and gets up the field and makes such a yardage on the play. We saw the respect the Cardinals do have for Gilbert on the first replay as they were double teaming Sean. First and 10 at the Phoenix 40, open but incomplete. Larry Centers was in the clear, but the pass was off the mark. Centers, very versatile back. They like his pass catching ability out of the backfield. Yeah, and he, he's caught 36 balls. So he's got to be very important in their, in their uh, possession style of play on third down. Second and 10. Cardinals lead 7 to 3 as we tick down toward three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Blunt the ball carry. And he stopped after a gain of one. Roman Pfeiffer credited with the tackle. He's the leading tackler for the Rams coming in. Pfeiffer's a very active linebacker. First name is Roman, as you mentioned. And he was named Roman because his dad was a great fan of Roman Gabriel. That's right. And what about his middle name? His middle Zabinsky. name is Zabinski. Zabinski. Zabinski, yeah. And his dad got that out of the phone book. Right. He ran them. Opened the phone book and picked out Zabinski. He liked it. Roman Zabinski Pfeiffer. The tough thing, he's trying to get in the Polish Hall of Fame. I don't know if he's going to make it or not. <laughs> Are you on the committee? Yeah. <laughs> Third down and nine. Berline drills one incomplete. His intended receiver was Randall Hill, who slipped as he tried to adjust to the ball, Wyman Henderson had the coverage, but that play was open, and Burline's upset that it did not connect. He's a great competitor. He was very upset about that pattern. Here we see him. 
plenty of time to step, throw, follow through, but the receiver slipped. And watch Burline. He's a little upset. Not only that, he's mad. <laughs> Rich Camarillo with a short, wobbly punt. A favorable bounce for Phoenix. And it's deadened by Edwards down at the 13-yard line. A 45-yard punt. Rams on offense after this. Sixty-one-year-old Chuck Knox in his second tour of duty as Rams head coach. Chuck told us last night that in 31 years of coaching in the NFL, he's never had a team have as many key injuries as this Rams team. Robert Bailey, Todd Kenshin, Todd Light, Tom Newbery, Robert Young, Jackie Slater, Pat Terrell, all out with injuries. Daryl Henley out facing drug trafficking charges, and those are key men for Los Angeles. The main man these days is Jerome Bettis, and he rumbled all the way out to the 29-yard line for a first down for the Rams. A gain of 15 for Bettis. And Lorenzo Lynch made the tackle number 29, but I guarantee it, watch the way he runs. He, from the I formation, he's back there about seven yards. The defense is able to spread out just enough. He sees the crack. Watch the crack in here now. Look at this. He sees the crack, makes a quick decision, and one guy doesn't take him down. There's Lynch. He, he made about seven yards after he, he got hit the first time. Under a minute and a half left in the first quarter. Phoenix leads seven to three. Rubley will run. And he goes out of bounds just short of a first down at the 38-yard line, chased out by John Booty. And I asked him yesterday, I said, when you scramble, do you scramble with the idea of running or with the idea of passing? He said, well, very frankly, he said, if I have a chance and nobody around, I'll take off and run. But I really scramble with the idea of hoping to get somebody downfield and completing a nice pass. He had the opening that time. He didn't have to throw it. Second and a long one for Los Angeles. They got to run right to the center. Here it comes. Pettis. First down. Out to the 44-yard line. And we're under a minute in the first quarter. Tyrone Stowe made the tackle. We saw the list of injuries, Hank, and the effect is well documented statistically. Rams two and two before the injury started setting in. One and six cents without Robert Young, nowhere near as many sacks with the injuries to guys like Slater and Newberry, many more sacks allowed. And with the injuries in that secondary, many more touchdown passes surrendered. That's just impossible. You win with talent, and when you don't have them, I don't care how hard you coach, it's still very, very difficult to win. Open in the flat is Tim Lester. And he's across midfield and out of bounds at the 49 of Phoenix, about three yards short of a first down. John Booty ran him out. And that's another very effective weapon, the play-action pass, because it slows down the rush. And especially those big guys right up in the middle area, they take a little sniff of the fake, and you can throw over the top of them or out to the outside, which he did in the last play. The Rams do not have to run another play here in the first quarter. And now to five seconds remaining. Second and three. And they won't get the playoff. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Phoenix Cardinals 7 and the Los Angeles Rams 3. Sean McDonough with Hank Stram back in Tempe, Arizona. The homestanding Phoenix Cardinals looking for their fourth win of the year. Lead the Rams 7-3. to three. Los Angeles also looking for its fourth win of the season. Rams have it, second and three at the Phoenix 49 on the opening play of the second quarter. And Rubley throws downfield, incomplete. Ellard was open, the pass was a little bit short. That kind of a pass, uh, you know, a great receiver like Ellard, he's got to just bend down, get low, and make that kind of a catch. He didn't bend enough. Had he bent a little bit more at the knees, he'd have been able to make that catch. It wasn't a very good-looking pass, but you still got to make those catches. Eller, the Rams' all-time leading receiver with 577 receptions. That's 14th on the all-time list.
Rubley, two of six for 61 yards, looking at third down and three now. A pitch to Lang, and he's tackled from behind, short of a first down. Eric Hill chased him down. Dennis was not in the ball game, and they tossed it to David Lang, who was carrying for just the fourth time this year. And Hank on second and three, they decided to throw rather than give it to those big backs a couple of times and bowl ahead for the first down. Now they're in a punt situation. They couldn't pick it up after having second and three. Yeah, that's always a tough call. Sean Landetta, one of the newest members of the Rams. And this guy's a terrific kicker, too. Boy, you talk about pounding the ball. He does. Let go by the Giants was Landetta. Fair catch made by Blunt at the 17-yard line. A 33-yard punt. T.J. Rubley is two of six for Los Angeles, and both teams have been moving the ball, Hank. Yeah, they both came into the end of the game with the idea they're going to be loose. They're just going to play football. They're not going to be worried about anything else. Just open up the game and play and throw the ball a lot on first down. So far, they're doing a pretty good job with that scheme. First and ten for Steve Berline and the Phoenix Cardinals. Beginning at their own 17-yard line. Leading 7-3 to three in the first minute of the second quarter. Ron Moore. Took it out to the 21. He gained four. Tackled by Roman Pfeiffer. Moore out of Pittsburgh State of Kansas. Do you know the nickname for Pittsburgh State of Kansas? The Gorillas. And he, uh, he takes a lot of pride in the fact that he played there. And he's a hard player. Boy, he's a good hitter. And he's very... A good reactionary player, good against the pass and also the run. Last year as a senior at Pittsburgh State, 39 touchdowns for Ron Moore. They were in the Division II National Championship game the last three years and won it all in 1991. Coach Chuck Royals. Reverse. And it's Ricky Cole who slipped down, got back up, but it's a loss on the play back to the 20. I've seen a lot of people slipping and sliding. It's hard to believe with. The conditions here in Phoenix where it doesn't rain very often. No, and I was down on the field before the game, and it didn't appear to be as bad as it seems to be for the players. Of course, we've been out here for several days because you always have to come early to Phoenix when you're preparing for a game. Look, they fake inside the Moore, a play that he likes to run, trying to get the, the defensive people to take a sniff of that fake, and then a run to reverse, but good reaction on the part of the Rams, and as a result, they don't make any yardage on the play. Look at, the room on, now. look at all the room on the right side and the right receiver. Airline over the middle. Ricky Kroll, first down. Out to the 35-yard line. Roman Pfeiffer had the coverage, and that's a little bit of a mismatch. Pfeiffer made the tackle, but Kroll gained 15. Here we see the play coming from the behind the quarterback as he looks at it. Look at Kroll coming in across the middle. Pfeiffer trying to cover around the play. The ball was thrown perfectly. Actually, Pfeiffer didn't have the coverage. He came over to cover up for. He tried to help out on the play, actually. One of the other Rams who right. lost his man. It looked like it was Courtney Griffin. He was trying to run with Kroll. First and 10 at the 35 yard line. Played three minutes in the second quarter. The Cardinals lead 7 to 3. Erline. Short of a first down at the 43-yard line. Steve Israel made the tackle on Gary Clark. Gain of nine on first down for Berline. Well, they spread the ball around pretty good. And, of course, the great thing about it is I think the protection has been, been very good so far. Fans in Southern California, very familiar with Steve Berline, who began his career with three seasons with the Raiders. Then went on to Dallas for two years, the backup to Troy Aikman. 91 took over for Aikman. But Troy went down with an injury and led Dallas to five straight wins. Look at the left, the left receiver on the outside, excuse me. Moore dancing and got close to the first down, needed to get right to the 45 yard line. Gerald Robinson is at the bottom of the pile, number 97 for Los Angeles. And they'll probably need a measurement. 
you know, that kind of a play, Sean, is is very important for the quarterback to change the play. He had about a 10 or 11 yard cushion over there. You got to throw the ball out there and take advantage of that kind of coverage. Joe Bugle under fire here in Phoenix. The ultimatum issued by the owner Bill Bidwell back in January is well chronicled. So they needed to have a winning season or Bugle and the coaching staff would be out. They have no chance at a winning season now. The maximum number of wins would be eight if they win all five of the remaining games. But who knows? Perhaps if they do win all five or four out of five, the ultimatum might soften. Yeah, you can make all the speculation you want, but in the final analysis, why uh, Billy Bidwell is going to make that decision at the end of the season and what's going to happen, I don't know. I personally think he ought to stay. I think he's done a good job. The record doesn't indicate that, but he's on the verge of having a good football team. Only 16 wins in nearly four full seasons now for Bugle as Phoenix head coach. More on first down, not two to the 47. Now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Sean, at Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami, Keith Byers finds a hole up the middle, six yards and a touchdown. That offsets an earlier TD by the Giants' Rodney Hampton. They're in the second quarter now, the Dolphins and the Giants tied at seven. Sean and Hank, back to you. Hank, those two teams surprising a lot of people, both the Giants and the Dolphins. Yeah, they really have, and especially, of course, I think the Giants especially because I don't think anybody had any expectations of their being as good as they are. And, of course, Don Shula at Miami has done a terrific job. They're better defensively, and they're running the ball better. Berline hoping to pass on second and eight, and he threw it away. Randall Hill was well covered by Courtney Griffin on the play. Wyman Henderson was also in the area. That'll bring up third down and eight for Phoenix. The Cardinals lead seven to three. Just under ten minutes remaining in the first half. And Burline uh, has a little trouble with the gimpy knee, and he's moving around pretty well out there, isn't he? He has moved along the field pretty well today. With the knee brace that he says he'll wear for the rest of the year. On third and eight. First down, Phoenix. Ricky Kroll found an opening at the 39 yard line of Los Angeles. And that was his own defense. And we asked him yesterday, I said, what kind of a pattern do you like to run most against his own defense? He said, I like a curl, a curl pattern. And this is exactly what he ran here in this situation. Look at Cunningham, the center doing a good job up front. Look at he rolls. Goes back into the void in that zone. There it is. He makes the catch first down for the Cardinals. Ricky Prohl. Of the ball game with 48 catches. That was seventh in the NFC. Back to the run on first and ten. What a pop delivered by Henry Rowling on the ball carrier Ron Moore. That was a big league hit, I'll tell you that, by Rowling. And you know, he initiated his career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I was doing the preseason game for them at that particular time, and he looked like a heck of a prospect. Watch rolling now, number 59, come in here and make the hit. Watch this. Ron Moore is saying they didn't there he is. hit like that in Division Two. <laughs> rolling in his first year with the Rams, after playing for Tampa Bay for two years, went to San Diego for three, and then brought to Los Angeles to help fill the void created by the departure of Kevin Green to the Steelers. Puts on the move and picks up the first down. Tackled by Wyman Henderson. Gary Clark got inside the 30 to the 28. Another first and 10 for the Cardinals. And that was a three-step drop by the quarterback, Burline. And usually the three-step drop takes about uh, 2.3 seconds to get rid of the football. And that's why we see so much of the two three-point drop and also the three-step drop, I should say, and also the five-stepper. And the five-step comes in about uh, usually about 3.5, 3.8. Burline has thrown to Clark five times for a total of 63 yards. Well, there's a big point in the middle of that defense if they can get the ball in there. Burline goes over the middle too high for Clark. They're trying to pick on Wyman Henderson, it appears. Yeah, they're giving him a lot of business. Mm -hmm. Clark's already caught five, and that would have been six had he been able to handle it. Brett Five through three interceptions in Green Bay's loss 
at Chicago. Rodney Peak threw four interceptions as Detroit was shut out. Mary Foster didn't play, but Pittsburgh still held off New England. We'll look at the finals from earlier this afternoon. And Chicago is hot. Boy, they're playing good, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Ron Moore threw a hole inside the 25. Mm. He powers down to the 23. Still five yards short of a first down, third and five upcoming. Mark Boutte made the tackle, and he's a young defensive tackle. It was a bright future, it would appear, for Los Angeles. Another big one, 298, and he can play. He's going to be a good one. In his second year out of LSU, third round pick last year for the Rams. Much more, keeping his head up. Eyes open, sees, it, sees the gap, a cavity there, but uh, by the time he gets there, it closes. Big play on the drive, third down and five. Burline to the goal line, touchdown. Again, Gary Clark got away from Wyman Henderson for a 22-yard touchdown reception. See, that's what happens when you jump out of the pocket. See, the corner, the corner thinks he might have to come up to make a play on a quarterback, but he can't do that. He's got to go back and make coverage. Sixth catch of the game for Clark, his second touchdown as a Phoenix Cardinal. And Greg Davis will try the extra point to make it 14 to 3. Out of the hole to Furline. Clark having a field day at the expense of Wyman Henderson. 6.42 left till halftime, 14-3 Phoenix. Okay, here we go with the Burline coming out of the pocket, going to his right, looks back in the pocket, looking for the throw, and then he stops, runs to the right, and here's the adjustment by Clark. Henderson covering on the play, but didn't cover him tight enough, but it's a touchdown for the Cardinals. And Greg Davis kicks off in the direction of Daryl Boykin, and that will be a touchback. So the Rams go on the attack, trailing by 11, and will return to Sun Devil Stadium right after this. Phoenix now leads 14 to three, following the 22-yard touchdown pass. Burline to Clark, it capped a 13-play, 83-yard drive that consumed nearly seven and a half minutes. It's been an otherwise frustrating year for Gary Clark in his first year with Phoenix as a free agent, bothered most of the year by a groin pull. From the 20, first and 10 for the Rams. Bettis, first down. That's 13 more for Jerome Bettis. He continues to run like this, and I'm sure he is during the course of his career. There's going to be a lot of defensive backs casually slip <laughs> when he comes into the secondary. I tell you, he's tough. 245, good eyes, good move, very decisive, makes good decision. Finally gets hit, but there again, he made three yards after he got hit by three guys. Already halfway to 100 yards is Jerome Bettis. We call him the battering ram, and you're seeing why. Rudely in trouble, and he threw it away. Over the head of Tim Lester, who was covered along the sideline. That's a good move on the part of the young quarterback. Normally, you know, the young quarterback will just get sacked. But but he got, got rid of the ball to avoid a sack. Gets rid of the ball downfield. Incomplete. And gets another try. It was Ken Harvey who knocked him down after Rubley threw it away. Freddie Joe Nunn was also in pursuit. Rubley only two of seven to this point for 61 yards. Phoenix is ranked 22nd in the NFL against the pass. Back to Bettis. Looked like they'd stop him around the line of scrimmage. Instead, he pulled ahead for 10 yards and another first down. John Booty had to make the play in the secondary. And Zordich 
Zordich tries to get number 38, tries to make the tackle. Watch what happens when he makes contact. Look at this now. Watch him. Watch him come into the picture here in just a minute. Look at this. Watch this hit. Look at this. Right the. See where Zordich wound up on his back? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Venice was the 10th pick in the first round of the draft this year, and Joe Bugle told us yesterday that the Cardinals came very close to taking him with the number three pick. It came down to a decision between Garrison Hurst and Venice, and they wanted a little bit more of the explosive tight back in Hurst. Dumped off and caught by Cleveland Gary. He stopped short of a first down, but in the Phoenix territory is Gary. At the 49, Tyrone Stowe made the tackle. Good touch on that soft ball over the top by Rubley. Rubley got his first start against San Francisco in week eight and didn't start the following week. He wondered if he'd ever get the chance again to start. Now he knows that he'll be the quarterback for the rest of the season, barring injury. Bettis bounces off a couple of more tacklers, gets away from Lynch. What a run by Bettis. <laughs> All the way inside the 30. Finally, he was tackled by Robert Massey, but it looked like the Cardinal defenders wanted no part no of way. Jerome Bettis. <laughs> no way is right. And Massey, who finally was able to rope him to the ground, wound up injured on the play. And he's a very emotional runner. Watch this now. But the, the important thing, he makes good, quick decisions. Very decisive. He's going upfield. Look at this now. Lynch misses the tackle. Another missed tackle. And Zordich, Zordich missed the tackle. He's just a strong runner. I tell you, he's terrific. Certainly can't arm tackle him around the waist as the Cardinals were trying to do. Now watch the hit here. Watch the hit. Gary goes through there. Watch number 35 Smith hit him. And then Massey hits him. And then Massey gets hit from the backside by Rucker. And that really, I think, was what created the problem. Yeah, Keith Rucker in trying to help out Massey with the tackle. Hit Massey. Massey appeared into his left knee. He's on the sideline as the Rams have it first and 10 at the 29. Rubley has Bennis open. Hits Bennis. And he's out of bounds inside the 24-yard line. Eric Hill had the coverage. And Venice has become a more frequent receiving target out of the backfield in recent weeks. He came into the game with 16 catches for the year. And he kind of likes catching the ball, too. I, I think basically he came into pro football with a personality of being a runner. And uh, now he's being thrown the ball quite, a, quite often. And he likes that and enjoys it because usually he gets a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations on the outside. A lot of space. Rams trail by 11. It's 14 to 3. Phoenix runner three and a half minutes left in the first half. Dennis stacked up, but again, he managed to drive the pile forward down to the 20. Michael Bankston was at the bottom of the pile for Phoenix. Jerome wound up about two yards short of the first down. Third down upcoming. Dennis is going to go back to Notre Dame in January and work toward his degree. He needs two more semesters to earn a degree in business management at Notre Dame. We talked to him yesterday, delightful guy. And doesn't they have a great attitude, full of sure enthusiasm? From the Detroit area, was an avid bowler growing up. Bowling over the Cardinal defenders here in the first half. Rubley drills it, intercepted. Lorenzo Lynch picked it off. After it bounced off the hands of the tight end, Pat Carter. <laughs> Throwing the ball to Carter, the tight end right inside. It bounces up into the air, and there you have have Lynch with an interception. And Chuck Knox is wondering what happened. Carter was open. wasn't a very good looking pass again by Rubley. Tough to tell if it was tipped, but it certainly wasn't a spiral. And Lynch has his second interception of the season, eighth of his career. From 
the seven on first down. They give it to Moore. He made it to the nine, and that's all. And we're under 225 left in the half. Henry rolling made the stop for the Rams. If you're Los Angeles, Hank, are you considering using timeouts down here to try to pin Phoenix in and make them punt the ball back to you? Yeah, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will because even if they take one now, they're still going to get another timeout to two-minute drill, two-minute offense. And the clock ticks down to the two-minute warning. 14 to three, Phoenix. We'll be back after this on CBS. At the two-minute warning, Phoenix with a 14-3 lead. Phoenix with two timeouts remaining. The Rams have three in Los Angeles. The Dudley thinking about using one after this next play. Should they stop the Cardinals short of a first down? Steve Berline has been picking apart the beleaguered Rams secondary. 9-14 to at this point. Already 151 yards passing and a touchdown for Berline. They got bump and run on the right side. They ought to try to go up on top and try to get a big one. Moore. Did well to gain four. Rams had all kinds of chances around the line of scrimmage to drop him for no gain. Instead, Moore made it out to the 14-yard line. Finally, Tony Woods took him down. The clock still runs. Down to a minute 40 and counting with third down and about two upcoming for Phoenix. Moore, great try on the play. Runs into a lot of traffic, a lot of folks, but he gets away. Great determination and a missed tackle by Bote on the play. Sean Gilbert also had a chance to wrap up Moore right around the line of scrimmage. Moore out of ball game. On third down and two. They keep it on the ground with Larry Centers. And he has the first down out to the 20. Coming up on the NFL Today Halftime Report, Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw will have all of today's scores and highlights. Not a lot of highlights for a lot of the quarterbacks around the league today. Bobby Bear threw six interceptions. Oh, he did. He's, had a, he's been having a hot year, too. Five through three. Rodney Pete through four. Houston Oilers have come back strong. They're they're a hot team too, like a little bit like the 49ers. Seven three wins for the Oilers. Both teams are content to go to halftime with the score 14 to three. Fans boo as they hand it off to Moore. Mark Boutte made the tackle. That will be the final play of the first half. The end of the first half with the score, the Phoenix Cardinals 14 and the Los Angeles Rams 3. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Compact Computer Corporation. Miller Lite, great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? And by Magnavox, the ingenious products from Magnavox. They're smart, very smart. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota, makers of the exciting all-new Celica. Watch out, it's here. Geronimo, an American legend, a new film from Columbia Pictures. American Airlines, something special in the air. And by Smooth Bush Beer, an easy drink in Bush Light. And welcome back to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Sean McDonough along with Hank Stram. We hope you enjoyed the first half. The Phoenix Cardinals lead by a score of 14 to 3. And Hank, the Rams moved the football up and down the field, particularly on the ground. They had 100 yards rushing in the first half. 87 of those came from Jerome Bettis. But Phoenix was picking apart that Rams beleaguered secondary. Yeah, they did a good job of mixing the run and the pass and uh, kept them off balance, I think, and took advantage of uh, the defense, really, of the Los Angeles Rams. Each team scored on its opening drive. Phoenix got the ball first and went right down the field. A long drive capped by a one-yard touchdown plunge by Ron Moore. 
He's impressive. The first time I've seen him play, he's a good, tough guy. And uh, a little bit like Bettis, wears his heart in the sleeve. Very emotional runner. Came went in there for the touchdown. The Rams also scored at the end of their opening drive on a 22-yard field goal by Tony Zendejas. Then in the second quarter, it was Burline to Gary Clark, who really had an easy time of it for much of the half against Wyman Henderson. Well, he went back in the pocket looking to throw left, and then they wound up throwing the ball on the move and, and beats Henderson on the play. Goes in for the touchdown. In fairness to Henderson, it's tough for any cornerback in the league to cover a receiver like Clark when Burline had that much time to throw. The Rams will get it first to open the third quarter. Phoenix with an 11 point lead. Greg Davis in his sixth year out of the Citadel will kick off. He's also been the place kicker for Atlanta and New England. Mitchell Price and Daryl Boykin again back deep for the Rams. Boykin was at the bottom of your screen. Line drive kick and it goes out of bounds. The Rams will open the second half with excellent field position at the 35 yard line. Out of bounds. The ball belongs to the receiving team at the 35 yard line. It was a very cleanly played first half. We hardly heard anything from Johnny Greer, the referee. You know, the nice thing about the game, I, I think with teams both of whom have eight, three and eight records, I think you have to be impressed with the way they're playing the game as far as the effort is concerned. And you expect that the professional football players, but they're still playing very, very hard. The only infraction in the first half was the pass interference call. That was declined. See if they start with a sweep. Nope. That is up the middle. And he's nearing his fourth 100 yard rushing game of the season. He's coming off a career best game last week against the 49ers at the Big A when he rushed for 133 yards and only 18 carries. That play gained three out to the 38 yard line. Gave it, uh, give it a gain of four rather as they spot it down to the 39. Pretty good push by the offensive line of the Rams. Had enough of a crack to pick up some yardage on the play. On second and six, Rubley, who struggled in the first half, throws, caught. And Henry Ellard slips down in Phoenix territory at the 44 yard line. Again, it wasn't a very pretty pass by Rubley, thrown very few spirals to this point. 17 yard gain. I think he's holding on to the ball a little bit too long. I think that's the problem. Anytime you hold it, and hold it too long out in front. The ball's going to go down, and that's where it's going. And it's done that several times this afternoon. First and ten, Rams at the 44 of Phoenix. They run outside this time with Bettis. Good lead blocked by the fullback, Tim Lester. And Jerome's down at the 38 yard line. That's a gain of six more. For the rookie out of Notre Dame who weighed in this week at 240 pounds. And uh, there again, they've, they've made good, consistent yardage on that play to the outside, and especially to the left. Here we see the sweep again. He just pitches it to Pettis, and Pettis runs sideways, hope to get the defense to spread out on the retreat angle, uh, their uh, pursuit angles, and then take the gap and make yardage on the play. Each is three yards to reach 100. Rubley with all day to throw. Incomplete. Over the head of Ellard, who was well covered by Aeneas Williams. They think Aeneas Williams is having a Pro Bowl caliber year yeah, in the Valley of the Sun. Yeah, he's a big league corner guy. He really has done a good job for the Cardinals. They like him very much. He's from New Orleans. And uh, a very, very good cover guy. Aeneas Williams in his third year out of Southern University. He has a brother named Achilles. His father, Lawrence, decided he not want his sons to have a name as common as his own. So they are Achilles and Aeneas. Rams have only converted once on third down. This is third and four. Rubley being chased. On the run, he throws into traffic, intercepted and dropped. Booty had it in his arms and dropped it. It was a bad decision by Rubley as Pat Carter was surrounded, as you can see, by three Cardinals. 
And he was very fortunate, was TJ, that that was not intercepted. We'll see him escape from the pocket now. Look, he's running to the outside, looking to throw the ball. Gets around the bend, knows that he hasn't reached the line of scrimmage yet. He sees the three right in front of him there, but it was a bad decision. Should have been interception. This is a 56-yard field goal try for Zendejas, and it's blocked. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Chris Oldham picked it up after it had been blocked, and now there's a fight along the Phoenix sideline. Zendejas trying a 56-yarder. Didn't get it airborne, and it was blocked by the Cardinals. Chuck Knox knows that Zendejas has the best percentage in NFL history from beyond 50 yards. He's made 17 out of 22 in his career, but that time it was batted down. There's a right... Right, a uh, rush right up in a uh, right center of the screen there. Somebody got their hand up, and I couldn't tell who it was. Joe Bugle fighting for his job. Love the block. All right, here we see it again. And right in the middle of the picture, you can't see the. Watch the hand come up. Look at the hand come up. They credit Mike Jones, 75, with a block, but he didn't get it. It looked like it was just a low kick by Zendejas into the middle of the line. In any event, Phoenix in business with the Rams. 30, Clark had it bounce off his hands and incomplete. And this time, instead of his old friend Wyman Henderson on the coverage, it was Odie Harris, number 31. Or check that, Steve Israel, number 31. There's where's 31 for the other guys. Second and 10, 12 29 left in the third quarter. 14 to 3, Phoenix. Ron Moore, big hole. First down, Cardinals at the 19, tripped up by Anthony Newman. 11 yard gain for Moore. The Giants have taken the lead from Miami on the touchdown reception by Howard Cross. And the Chiefs lead Seattle to the Kingdom at the half. It'll be very important for the Cardinals to score on this drive, too. They've got a great opportunity. Opportunities are fine, but you've got to take advantage of it. They've got to get seven. Joe Bugle doesn't want any more close calls at the end. His team has lost seven games by a touchdown or less. Seven of the eight losses by seven points or less for Phoenix. Moore rips through another hole. Touchdown! yards on the touchdown run second score of the day for Ron Moore he's up to 81 yards rushing and Chuck Knox's team just can't play defense they gave up the third highest yardage total in franchise history last week against the 49ers and today the Cardinals are ripping through Greg Davis made the extra point two touchdowns today for Ron Moore and just over three minutes into the third quarter, the Cardinals now lead 21 to three. Joe Bugle hasn't had much to be happy about in his four years as Phoenix head coach, but he was delighted that the Cardinals capitalized on the block field goal, needed only three plays to go the 30 yards. Just 51 seconds after the block field goal, Ron Moore took it in from 19 yards up. Cardinals lead 21 to 3. Darrell Boykin with some room on the far side of the field. He didn't have the speed to get out there and turn the corner. And he was chased down by Michael Zordich. So here comes Rubley again. And now the Rams 
Hank, their success all day on offense has been running the football, but can they stick with the grinded out running game down by this much in the third quarter? Well, that's been their problem. You know, see, they've gotten behind uh, in the games, a lot of the games they lost, and as a result, they had to abandon the run, so to speak, and go to the passing game, and that's when they got themselves in trouble. And when they have the balance of the run and the pass, I think they're very dangerous, but they just haven't uh, been able to do anything consistently from that balance standpoint. As you saw on the graphic, they do not win shootouts. Whistle stopped the play. There was contact along the line before the snap. And rare airtime today for Johnny Greer. Encroachment, defense, the man over the center, still first down. The officials didn't get a number on the play, but the man over the center was Ruben Davis. So it'll be first and five. At the 30 yard line. Bettis, flag thrown. Bettis into the secondary and finally tackled at the 47 yard line by Aeneas Williams, but that was thrown where you'd expect a holding call. The other thing about Bettis, you know, you can't tackle him high because he's going to take you for a ride. You got to tackle him low, and not many people want to challenge him low. They're going to slip and fall, but they're not going to tackle him low very often. The penalty wipes out what would have been a 23-yard gain for Bettis. Would have had him well over 100 yards. Holding, 64, offense. Still first down. That's Keith Loniker. He's starting at left guard for the injured Tom Newberry. Newberry inactive today with a knee injury. Loniker making his first NFL start. He was signed as a free agent in May out of the University of Kansas. And Chuck Knox says, I think they might have stumbled onto something. They like his potential to someday be a starter. And he's big and he's strong. He fits the, fits the mold as far as that left tackle position is concerned. Still first down. They stick with the run. And Lang sliced his way across the 25. Out to the 26-yard line for a gain of six before Mike Jones made the stop. Lang having a bit of a homecoming today. He played his college football at Northern Arizona. Now we have second down for the Rams and back to 10 to go for a first down. Sean McDonough with Hank Stram. Our producer this afternoon is Vin DeVito and our director Richard Drake. Bettis back in the ball game. Close to the first down, about two yards short as he was tripped up at the 33 by Lorenzo Lynch. 105 yards now for Jerome Bettis, his fourth 100-yard rushing game of his career. He's done it against New Orleans, Detroit, San Francisco last week, and Phoenix this afternoon. I think the uh, feeling of the Rams at this particular time, they're going to get back into this game. They've got to do what they have to do, what they normally do best, and that's run the football and then incorporate the passing as they go along. But they can't totally abandon the run yet. Dennis trying to bounce outside, in trouble, stopped short of the first down. The ball came out, but after the play was whistled dead. No gain on the play for Jerome Bettis, and again it was Lorenzo Lynch in the middle of the action for Phoenix. And the Rams will punt with Sean Landetta. He jumps to the outside, look at this. And there's Lynch again. Now he's all over the place. He's done a terrific job. Of course, he's a strong safety, but he's playing like a linebacker right close to the line of scrimmage. Might just three points on the board for Los Angeles. This is just the second punt for Landetta. Big play in the first half was that interception thrown inside the 20-yard line by Rudley off the hands of Pat Carter. Fair catch called for. And made by Eric Blunt. 8.53 remaining in the third quarter. The Cardinals with the ball and a 21-3 lead. The 
Nearly midway through the third quarter, Phoenix leads Los Angeles 21 to 3. It's 14 to 3 at the half. Total yard is just about even. The Rams have moved the ball. They've only had to punt twice. But a big turnover hurt. T.J. Rubley is 5 for 13 passing for 89 yards. 54 of those on one completion. Elliott and one interception. It's Burline at the helm at the moment. His own 32. Following a 35-yard punt by Landetta. Larry centers. Lost the football. Still free at the 30-yard line. Rams defenders indicating they came up with it. But they did not. The first official out of the pile says it's second down. Phoenix got it back. A strong guy in the bottom of that pile usually winds up with a football. It looked, it looked like they were going to get it. But again, the wrestling match underneath <laughs> takes over. Gets hit from the backside. And the ball jumps loose. And the Cardinals recover the fumble. And it all goes for no gain on the place. The fumble did cost Phoenix about six yards as the ball bounced back to the 32. Second and ten. And there was movement ahead of the snap at the left end of the offensive line for Phoenix. Ball start, 67, offense, prior to the snap, still second down. Luis Sharp, the left tackle, the only player still on the Cardinals team that was with the Cardinals the last time they had a winning record. That was back in 1984 in Phoenix, in the St. Louis round. There's the false start, number 67, a left tackle, and he's really been a super, super tackle for the Cardinals. And Joe Bugle said he's having his best year ever. He's a three-time Pro Bowler. He was an alternate on two other occasions. The centers tripped up from behind at the 34-yard line by Tony Woods. Larry Centers from Tatum, Texas. Population 400. A coal mining town in the northeast corner of Texas. And his college football at Stephen F. Austin. Larry Centers didn't play football until his senior year of high school because his mother wanted him to play the bass violin. And how about, you know, talking about the job he's done when he's had the opportunity. He's averaged 5.8 per try coming into this game. Third and eight. Burline with time. Throws. Incomplete. And Phoenix will have to punt for just the second time. Gary Clark was the intended receiver. Israel has been covering Clark here in the second half, and he's been doing a better job of it than Henderson did in the first half. Yeah, that time they had uh, help from the safety coming over, almost double coverage by the time the ball got there. Didn't have much of a chance to complete that pass. Steve Israel, second-year man out of Pitt, and here's Rich Camarillo to punt. Excellent. And a fair catch made by Henry Ellard at the 19-yard line, a 47-yard punt, and no return. Camarillo has led the NFL in net punting average the last two seasons. Next Sunday on a special edition of the NFL Today, an exclusive CBS Sports poll on the state of the game will reveal what you, the fans, feel is right or wrong in the NFL. Too many injuries? Have you had your fill of field goals? And who's the best player in the league? The answers to those questions and more next Sunday at 9.30 Pacific on the NFL Today. Then you'll see regional NFL action on CBS. Most will see the Rams take on the New Orleans Saints. Others, Dallas and Minnesota next Sunday on CBS Sports. Rams down by 18 on first down going deep. Rubley has a man open. Incomplete. Clipper Anderson was in the clear for a while, but as the ball hung in the air, the Cardinal defenders closed ground. Michael Zordich broke it up. Yeah, it looked like he probably waited just a fraction too long. They released the ball, and then it hung up there too long. And by that time, Zordich was able to come over and help make a play. See how open he was. Ball was a little bit short. And that'll bring up second and ten. Yeah. 
Bettis. Out to the 22 for a gain of three, tackled by Reuben Davis. While growing up in the Detroit area, Jerome Bettis, in his high school years, used to go to camps in the offseason, run by Reggie McKenzie. He said Keith Byers was really a great help to him when he was one of the counselors, and Jerome Bettis was a camper. Now, we asked him that question, who uh, helped him the most, and he said he thought, really, that Byers did as much for him as anybody. Now, Jerome Bettis goes back to work as a counselor. The youngsters at the Reggie McKenzie camps, suburban Detroit. Rubley on third down. And another man running free and overthrew him. That was Ernie Jones, the former Cardinal, who was moving into the clear along the far sideline. Just five completions today for T.J. Rubley at 15 tries. Even with the benefit of an effective running game, they can't get the passing attack going. No, they're having a hard time with that. And I saw Rubley in a preseason game against the Raiders early in the season. He looked terrific when he got into the game. In this game, he hasn't looked nearly as impressive as he did in that one. John Landetta signed by the Rams on November 12th. Blunt with some running room. He is knocked down at the 45-yard line, a 43-yard punt, an 11-yard return. Thomas Humko made the play on special teams for the Rams. He's their leading special teams tackler this season. So Burline and the Cardinals take over comfortably ahead at 21-3 with 6.08 remaining in the third quarter. along the sideline and got close to midfield. Matter of fact, they will mark him out all the way in Ram territory at the 48. Roman Pfeiffer knocked him out more with a good gain on first down of seven yards. He showed me some speed going around that corner when he when he got the pitch. I thought he'd probably be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage and right about the time he got to the corner, he ran around everybody. It was a terrific move on the part of Moore and good speed. Or a fourth round pick. The 87th player selected overall this year out of Pittsburgh State. Burline throws, nearly intercepted. He was looking for Ricky Prohl, and it was Wyman Henderson who broke it up. Nice play by the eight year veteran out of UNLV. Ricky Prohl goes down and to the inside here now. Look, he comes back. Didn't come back. Looked like he didn't see the ball. Looked like the sun got in his eye. That's what it looked like, didn't it? Indeed, it did. Henderson might not have seen it well either because the ball hit him right in the shoulder pass. Big key for Phoenix today has been third down efficiency. They picked up six out of eight. This one is third down and four at the Los Angeles 48. Burline with a short drop. Pole is wide open. First down, Cardinals at the 34. Dexter Davis, a reserve defensive back, made the tackle. A gain of 14. You know, overall, I think uh, the Cardinals have really had good pass protection most of the afternoon. They've had plenty of time to throw the ball. And the key really is the fact that they have to be able to step through, follow through, and he's been able to do that. When they talked to a man at the Cardinals yesterday about their concern for Sean Gilbert. And we haven't called his name at all today. Not occasion to do it all, if you're right, so far in this game. And double team through much of the game. Moore thrown down after a gain of one. Trying to strip the ball. Henry rolling into the stop. Gilbert was in on the play as well. Moore was an excellent high school wrestler in Oklahoma. As a senior, he had a wrestling match against Darian Gordon. Now with the San Diego cornerback. Gordon went on to be the Oklahoma State wrestling champion in their weight class. And those wrestlers, boy, they're always good players, too. You know, they got good leverage, good balance, very strong. And talking about strong, Joe Wolf, the left guard, has done a good job for the Cardinals on Gilbert. Three, 
Burline incomplete. Good effort by centers as he went all out of the dive. You talk about Joe Wolfhang. There's a guy who's a former first round pick for Phoenix because of his own lack of quality play and also some injuries. He's really become a backup. Got the start today because Mark May is inactive with a back problem. And this could be an important game for Joe Wolf. It's at the time of his career he has to start proving it. Yes, I think once the coaches look at this film, of course, we're not studying the film as we do this game, but it looks like when I've seen, had a chance to see him, he's done a very good job on Gilbert. First round pick at 89, now in his fifth year out of Boston College. They're going to run. They got to run left to the big hole over the left guard. Left, left. They're going to throw the ball. On third and nine, centers has some running to do to get the first down. He did. Another third down conversion for Phoenix. Down to the 22, a gain of 12. Michael Stewart credited with the stop. That was an overshifted defense in the offensive right. So as a result, the left side, either from a run or a pass standpoint, had to be there. They elected to throw the pass. It was a nice game on gain on the play. Look at it again. Good pass protection. Plenty of time to throw the ball. He makes the catch. Looks like he was going to go inside, went outside, then back inside again, and picked up nice yardage on the play. Larry Centers, who came into the game with 36 catches. Sean Gilbert who was injured on the play. With 337 remaining in the third quarter, we'll return to the Valley of the Sun right after this. Here he comes, coming into the hole here. Stewart makes the tackle. And watch Gilbert in the middle of the screen. He starts to fall down. His right leg goes up into the air, and somebody hits it. On first down, it's Moore through the middle. Darrell Boykin made the tackle in the secondary. So Sean Gilbert injured with his leg in the air after hitting the ground. One of his own teammates ran into that leg and he was helped off to the far side of the field and on first down Moore took it down inside the 12 very close to a first down and they'll measure Jim Everett has been warming up along the Ram sideline with the ineffectiveness of Rubley today Everett might get the call Moore is going to be inches short there's Everett who has struggled, as that record indicates, in recent years for the Rams. He had a string of 87 straight starts snapped in game eight at San Francisco when Rubley got his first NFL start. That had been the longest active streak among NFL quarterbacks. Well, he's still got a lot of football left. The question is, will it be for the Rams? Right. That's going to be the big question. Second and inches. Cardinals already ahead 21 to 3 and threatening to add to that lead with under three minutes to play in the third quarter. Moore got the first down. Thomas Homko made the tackle. He's in the game as a backup linebacker. And that puts Moore over 100 yards for the day. 20 carries, 101 yards for Ron Moore. He had 160 yards as his career high on November 7th against Philadelphia. He's a 220 pounder. He's a smooth mm -hmm. Tough guy to tackle. Runs hard, but good leverage. Moore again through the middle. And tripped up just short of the goal line by Anthony Newman. Moore took it to the one. He was a yard away from his third touchdown of the afternoon. And that was a counter trade play with the right guard, Smith pulling to his left and also Cunningham. Both of them pulling through the hole. But he just saw daylight. It had nothing to do with what the blocking was. He saw the seam, saw the cavity, took advantage of it, got it down there in good shape. Second and goal from the one. They line up Clarence Jackson in the backfield, a reserve linebacker. 
Moore trying to follow him. No indication yet. Touchdown. Third of the day for Ron Moore. remaining in the third quarter. Greg Davis drives home the extra point. And the Cardinals lead is 28 to 3. Much more coming off the ball split ahead. Got just enough of a push. Kept his sho shoulders square. Got under the pile and crossed the plane and then for the touchdown. You gotta be impressed with the Cardinals. They've had opportunities and they've taken advantage of the opportunities here this afternoon. So, Ron Moore is the first Cardinal since 1987 to have three rushing touchdowns in a game. The last player to do it, Derek McAdoo, back when they were the St. Louis Cardinals. That was October 11th of 87, and that was in a replacement game. So, he's the first Phoenix Cardinal to ever have three rushing touchdowns in a game. He carried six times on that drive for 30 yards on the score. The drive was 10 plays and 54 yards and chewed up another five minutes and eight seconds. Ron Moore, who won the Harlan Hill Award last year, is the best player in Division II college football. It's easy to understand why he won that award because he's very impressive and has been very impressive all year long. I'm, I'm just happy to have the opportunity to see him this afternoon. Two great young backs. Yeah, better support. Another great back. The Cardinals look forward to welcoming him back next year. He recovers from the knee problem. Davis drives it into the end zone. Boykin will down it. And it will be Jim Everett taking over for Rubley, quarterback. The eight year veteran. Saw his record since 1990, 19-40. Rubley was just 5 for 15 today for 89 yards and an interception. But Everett struggled earlier in the year when he was the starter. Has a quarterback rating of 58.3. That's the lowest in the NFC among the 15 qualifiers. Eller. With the catch, Everett on target off the bench for 12 yards and a first down. And Ias Williams made the play on Ellard and down now by 25 points. The Rams will go without a huddle in the final minute of the third quarter. Everett. Wobble ball as he was sacked. Michael Bankston brought it down to the 11-yard line. So one of the big advantages for Rubley over Everett is Rubley's escape ability. That time Everett couldn't run away. Not only did they sack him, but they stripped him. And the Cardinals have it back at the 11-yard line. You have to have a fantastic football team with situation substitution the way it is today, Sean, to have a quarterback who can't move from the pocket. The contemporary quarterback has to be a guy that can move by design, has great escape ability skill, and make plays on his own. If you got a pocket passer, you're playing 10 against 11. If you got a guy can move at the quarterback spot, you're playing 11 against 11. You got more of a chance. So if this is to be one of the final days of Joe Bugle as Cardinals coach, it'll be one of his brightest days as Phoenix coach as the route is on 28 to 3 and they're looking for more. And if it is his final season, I guarantee it's going to be a big mistake because he's very close to having a good football team. Moore got inside the 10, thrown down at the 9. After a gain of two, David Rocker, another reserve who's now seeing some action for the Rams. 92 made the stop. Well, that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Oh, 
At the end of three, the score, Phoenix 28 in Los Angeles 3. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Heading into the fourth quarter, the Phoenix Cardinals lead 28 to 3. And what might be one of the last games for Joe Bugle as head coach of the Cardinals. And last few days in sensing the fan response to the issue of whether or not he should keep his job. It, it seems to be about a 50-50 split as you walk around the Valley of the Sun. Yeah, I think there's a lot of sentiment in, in favor of Joe Bugle. But the, what the percentage is, uh, probably you're right, about 50-50. Erline incomplete as he threw it in the end zone looking for Clark. Wyman Henderson broke it up. Of course, one thing that Joe has working for him, the eyes both the fans and the media, and there have been many media members who have said he should keep his job, is the fact that he is a very likable guy. I think if he was an unpleasant, nasty, snarly sort with a 16-43 and 43 record, there wouldn't be, wouldn't be too many people rushing to his aid, but because of his personality, he's getting the benefit of the doubt from a lot of people, perhaps even the owner. Well, I think he's a likable guy, but I think he's a likable coach, too. I think he's a very good coach, and I think he'll prove that if he has the opportunity to stay with his football team and continue with the team that he's got right now. Burline batted down and nearly intercepted. Only Fred Stokes got a hand on the ball, and Roman Pfeiffer... Nearly came up with an interception. Now bring a fourth down and the field goal unit comes on for Phoenix. Berline is really upset over the fact that, that ball was blocked, tipped. He had a guy open, but he just didn't get there. Greg Davis out of the hole to Berline. 27-yard try officially. And it's good. And 13 seconds into the fourth quarter, the Cardinals lead is four touchdowns. 31-3 will be back right after this. This game summary is sponsored by Bud Light. Sorry about that, Mr. Announcer. Steve Berline has passed for 176 yards. Ron Moore, three touchdowns. I told you the last time that had happened. Rushing for a Cardinal was back in the strike year of 87. The last non-strike Cardinal to rush for three touchdowns. Wayne Morris back in October of 1980 against New Orleans. A long time since a Cardinal in a non-replacement game has rushed three times for a touchdown. We have a kickoff out of bounds. The ball relief belongs to the receiving team at the 35. So here comes Everett with the kickoff out of bounds. The Rams will begin at the 35. Everett has had one possession, completed his first pass, then was sacked, trying to throw, fumbled the football. Bankston recovered for Phoenix, and that led to the field goal by Davis, that has made it a 28 point game. Right, Arubly taking over. Jim Everett had been the Rams' starting quarterback since 1987. He went to the Pro Bowl in 90. That pass over the middle, incomplete, intended for Flipper Anderson. Admittedly, the team around him, Hank, has gotten worse, but it does appear that Jim Everett's skills have gone downhill as well. well they say that about him, but I think uh, it's amazing how how improved they become uh, with a good football team. And I think basically that's really been their problem. I think they've never been the same since they made that trade with Dickerson and never recovered from that situation. Everett running around and throwing incomplete. Tended for Cleveland Gary. He was out of bounds. David Braxton running stride for stride of the coverage. Gary, an excellent receiver out of the backfield. There's Chick Harris who signals in the play. He's one of the offensive assistants. Chuck Knox a long time through his stops in Seattle and Buffalo. And Chuck is really, uh, it's hard for him to go through what he's going through because he's never gone through that in his coaching career. I think in like 41 years as a, uh, as a coach. 
It's hard to take. He hasn't had many years like this, that's for sure. On third down, deep pass incomplete. Ellard fell down. Anderson was in the area. So three plays and out for the Rams. Well, that's the big question that they need to answer going into next year. Can Rubley do it? He didn't help his cause, certainly, with his performance today. Can Everett come back and be the kind of player he was a few years ago? And if not, then who do they try to get? Is it a player coming out in the draft or somebody else around the league? I think really, uh, you know, they've got they've got some uh, good players in certain positions, and they've got to start on coming back. But I think it'd be difficult to get somebody young quarterback out of college and expect him to come over and help this team. They need an experienced quarterback if Everett isn't going to be the guy. Blunt. Excellent return out to the 45-yard line. The punt by Landetta was 46. The return was 26. And outstanding field position again for the Cardinals at the 45-yard line. Blunt catches the ball right where he should be, right about the numbers. And here again, he makes some very good move, very decisively also, and sees the, the, the running room right up the side there and takes advantage of it, brings the ball back with good, good field position. Blunt didn't even dress last week. The game against the Giants with the injury to Johnny Paley. He's in action today. Just had a return to 26. Play action big. Burline getting greedy. Has Clark. He may go. One man to beat. He's down at the one-yard line. Steve Israel got enough of a hand on him to slow him down. And then they finished off Clark at the one, a gain of 55. And there again, that middle was wide open. Play action pass. Good protection. Watch Clark now. Henderson had his knees turned to the, but look at the big cushion. Then he slips and falls in the coverage, the open area. The void was in the middle. He's got the ball in the wrong arm. Could have straight armed the guy there and maybe gone in for the touchdown. Headed in the right arm, running to his left. And credit Roman Pfeiffer with hustling all the way on the play and chasing down Clark. And a timeout has been called by Phoenix. Seven catches, 140 yards receiving for Gary Clark. And already one touchdown today. He nearly had another. He's enjoying his best game in a Cardinal uniform. The timeout comes with 13-18 remaining. And Phoenix leading 31-3, about to add to it, it would appear. Next Saturday, it's NCAA basketball on CBS. The Duke Blue Devils in Grand Hill take on the Michigan Wolverines of Jawan Howard. Coverage begins at 10 a.m. Pacific. Then the NFL on CBS features the 49ers and the Falcons beginning at 12.30 Pacific with the NFL today. That's next Saturday on CBS Sports. And the 49ers, boy, they are hot, especially offensively. They got some problems, a little problem defensively, but they're doing a great job offensively. Perhaps another chance for Moore to score a touchdown. He already has three. And they're in the territory where you'd expect them to hand off to Ron Moore if he's in the ballgame. And he is again lined up behind Garth Jacks, the linebacker who's been used in recent games as a blocking back in short yardage and goal line situations. Ought to run left, ought to run left. They do. Moore to the goal line. Lunged. But they'll spot him down inches short. I guarantee had he pitched the ball to him, run outside, he'd gone in standing up. The last Cardinal with four rushing touchdowns in the game was Wayne Morris back in 1977. October 23rd of that year against New Orleans. A lot of that damage done against New Orleans. Talking about New Orleans, they lose today to Cleveland, huh? Four again. Touchdown number four.
Joe Bugle hasn't had many days like these as a head coach. Neither is Chuck Knox. You said it earlier, but uh, talking to Chuck on the field before the game, he said he's never been associated with any team in all the years he's coached that has so many injuries as this one. This capped a three play 56 yard drive the big play the 55 yard completion to Clark. CBS sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Chevrolet trucks the most dependable longest lasting trucks on the road. Tots Block and Noir there's a little fun in every bottle. Smooth operator wet dry razors from Panasonic smoother than you ever thought you'd be. And by Pizza Hut anytime's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. It's a gorgeous day in the Valley of the Sun, a great day to be a Cardinal fan, and a great day for Ron Moore. The rookie out of Pittsburgh State has rushed for four touchdowns. He came into the game with two. And the route is on 38 to 3 in favor of Steve Berline and the Phoenix Cardinals. Kickoff taken by Darrell Boykin at the goal line. And he brought it out to the 18-yard line. Garth Jacks put the hit on Boykin. Jacks, an excellent special teams player over the years. He loves to crack it, doesn't he? In his eighth year out of Florida State. Originally a draft choice of Dallas back in 1986. So again, poor field position for the Rams. And it's Jim Everett, that quarterback, he's been in for two possessions. Has just one completion. Bettis. And he rumbles out to the 25 yard line. Lorenzo Lynch made the tackle. He's had a good day for Phoenix. Eight of six for Jerome Bettis. Talk about the decision at the quarterback position facing Chuck Knox, and you'll be making those decisions in the future without the other man in your picture in the background grasping the headset. Ted Tolner. The last few years has been the quarterback's coach for the Rams, and he is leaving to become the head football coach at San Diego State, replacing the fired Al Luganville. Yeah, he's very excited about the opportunity. A lot of people didn't think he'd be here, but he's going to be here, I think, for most of the rest of the season, probably, but do some recruiting in the meantime during that span of time, the next four or five weeks. So he'll try to wear both hats, fulfill his obligation to the Rams, and also put together his staff at San Diego State, try to recruit some football players. David Lang, the last carry for Los Angeles, and Reuben Davis made the stop. T.J. Rubley says he didn't think he would have gotten the opportunity to be an NFL quarterback, but not for Ted Tolner. It was Tolner who went to Tulsa to scout T.J. Rubley and told the Rams to take a chance on T.J. in the ninth round and then guaranteed that Rubley got enough snaps to make an impression in the preseason training camp. And Jim Everett also speaks very highly of him because I think he's added a lot of individual attention to the quarterback position with the Rams as far as the teaching process, scouting, and all those individual things. Cleveland Gary, the ball carrier, and he picked up the first down, it would appear. And it is a first down out of the 31-yard line. Briefly, the Rams went with a no huddle, but the cause apparently hopeless, down by five touchdowns. They're not in any particular hurry now, getting in and out of the huddle. Probably in a hurry to get on the bus. Everett swings it out to Lang. And he's close to another first down. He'll have it as they spot him out at the 43-yard line. Michael Zordich knocked him out of bounds. Lang had only one reception this season prior to today's game. And there's a flag thrown late, a skirmish on the field, and they're pulling... Reuben Davis and Keith Rucker away from the Rams. Not very smart to pick a fight with those two legs. No. <laughs> and a combined 700 pounds roughly. Penalty free game today. And the officials are going to talk it over. We mentioned Keith Rucker, former basketball player in addition to a football player at Ohio Wesleyan. A Division three school playing on the football team pulled around the offseason at the gym 
with some guys on the basketball team. He can dunk even at 360 pounds, so they convince the coach to give him a try. Wow. Had to have a strong. Number 79, offense, 93, defense. The penalties are after the pass, first down. Ruben Davis of Phoenix, Leo Goaz of Los Angeles. Those ticketed with the penalty. So the play stands and a first down for the Rams out to the 43. So Rucker actually did play some basketball as a senior at Ohio Wesleyan, averaged about 10 minutes a game. How'd you like to be the four when he went up? I don't think anybody's standing and taking a charge either as he no. drives to the hoop. <laughs> Under 10 minutes remaining. Lang slipped as he tried to turn the corner. It's a gain of one. Of course, it was Rucker who, after the game last week at New York, the excruciating loss for the Cardinals against the Giants, was on the post-game locker room show on the Cardinals radio network and was sobbing uncontrollably. We talked about professional athletes. Perhaps they don't care once the losses started piling up. But most of the Cardinals we spoke with this week said it was a most difficult loss they'd ever been associated with, and Rucker could not stop sobbing on the radio network after the game last week. Well, he was still very emotional talking about it just yesterday, and it's very wanted to emphasize very strongly that uh, they play they play because they love to play the game. The pay is important, but the love of the game is most important. Pass intended for Lang, incomplete. Tyrone Stowe had the coverage. Keith Rucker told us that as a result of that interview, he got a letter from a Cardinal season ticket holder who told him that he was going to cancel the season tickets, so frustrated with the loss, but then he heard Rucker on the radio. He realized the players really do care. He said not only was he renewing his season tickets, but he's going to get five more. And he felt good about that, too. He was all smiles talking about it, wasn't he? Of course, a big part of the problem here in Phoenix is ticket sales. They have fewer than 40,000 here today. And you wonder if that will factor into the decision as to whether or not to keep Joe Bugle as coach. Everett across the field, got away with it to Sean LaChapelle, the rookie out of UCLA. That is his first NFL reception and a memorable one as Everett seemed to throw it up for grabs over the middle. Chuck Cecil made the tackle, but it looked for a while like that ball was going to be picked off. 14 yards on the first catch ever in the NFL by Sean LaChapelle. Everett now goes back into the pocket, but now he escapes. See, and he knows where La Chapelle is, and he knows exactly where to throw the ball. Oh, <laughs> however, it should have really been intercepted. Elias Williams had a great chance at it, but La Chapelle had the catch, a fifth round pick this year for the Rams. The all time reception record holder at UCLA, Mike Sherrard's record there. To the end zone, incomplete. Double coverage. Michael Zornich, the man who knocked it down, and Elias Williams was also there. Zordish really got a good jump on the ball. Number 38 coming back. Here you see him here now. The ball is he's trying to throw the ball deep beyond the coverage, but Zordish gets the hand up, double coverage. Smith is also there and knocked the ball down incomplete. Oliver Anderson, intended receiver. The paid attendance here today, 33,964. They made a lot of noise. Yes, they have. Up the middle, big hole, first down and much more for Tim Lester. As the blocking back doesn't get a chance to carry it much, he'd only lugged the ball six times all year prior to today. That's a 17-yard gain for Lester, the second-year man out of Eastern Kentucky. He's only carried, carried the ball twice in all the games they play, two per game, but he's averaged 4.9. Zordich, who made the stop in the secondary. The Rams are on the move at the 25 yard line. First and 10, seven and a half minutes remaining. Lang couldn't turn the corner as Booty tripped him up. See those linebackers, those uh, safeties are playing close to the line of scrimmage. That kind of a play, he got penetration, and once you get penetration in an outside play, you're not going to make yardage. You made a good shoestring tackle on the play. And a loss of four on the play back to the 30 yard line. And took out the took on the blocker very, very well. And knocked, knocked the runner down. 
They've missed Booty the last four games. He was out with an ankle injury. Johnson is still a little bit tender. Doesn't feel like he can plant as well as he'd like to. Everett over everything. Looking for La Chapelle, but was not close. When they're playing that coverage, uh, the middle is the area that's really vulnerable if you can get through there and uh, get the pass protection on some kind of a crossing pattern to take advantage of that middle area. Ted Tolder's student, Jim Everett, three of nine since coming into the ballgame for 38 yards. He's fumbled once. And combined, Everett and Rubley are eight for 24 today. Under seven minutes remaining, Phoenix on top, 38-3. Cleveland Gary delivers the stiff arm, lost the football out of bounds. He was trying to shed Chris Oldham. And as he gave him the stiff arm, he lost the ball, but fortunately for Cleveland Gary, it went out of bounds. Gary's had a history of fumbling problems in the past. Okay, here we see the fumble. Well, you got face mask without a flag. There's a tackle, and as he starts to go down, he doesn't put the ball close to his side, and it pops out of there. Fortunately, it goes out of bounds. They still have possession. And they'll go for it on fourth down at the 23-yard line, fourth and seven. Everett, plenty of time, throws, caught. Flipper Anderson. Drilled out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Michael Zornich delivered the blow. 19 yards on the completion. There's a crossing pattern. There he came across the middle. Good timing on the play by Everett. Gets the ball to him out in front, and he runs with the ball extremely well once he makes the catch. Here you see him. Good lead. And he, what he does really is man for man coverage, and Smith is carrying him all the way across the field, and he licked him on the crossing pattern. Six ten remaining. Flipper Anderson, came in the ball game, averaging just under 17 per catch. Not much there for David Lang. crowd wants a stop here. It was Zordich who made the play on Lang. Second and goal from the four. Jim Everett in his eighth year out of Purdue, 6'5", 212 pound. Last year, move past the Rams, Roman Gabriel to the top of the Rams' all-time completion list. To the end zone and incomplete. Troy Drayton running to the corner of the end zone. Was covered by Freddie Joe Nunn. Third and goal upcoming. Got the ball over the top nicely. It was a good touch when the only problem was it wasn't complete. Could have been caught. Yeah, he had he had it and it slipped right on through. A little more frustration. It's already agonizing here for Everett. Right, great, ordinarily a good receiver. There's Fritz Shermer, former Rams assistant, now defensive coordinator with Phoenix. On third and goal, Everett. Touchdown! Troy Drake, his third NFL touchdown reception. First touchdown of the day for the Rams. And Drayton came into the game with 16 catches. That makes it 17 so far this season. He's a second-round pick this year. Out of Penn State. Zendejas drives it through. And with 5.09 remaining, the score is Phoenix 38. And Los Angeles 10 on the touchdown pass. Everett to Drake.
Next Sunday on a special edition of the NFL Today, we'll have the results of our exclusive CBS Sports poll on the state of the NFL. We'll reveal the answers to the questions asked fans around the country. That's next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, followed by this menu of games at 1 Eastern time. The Rams at New Orleans at 4 Eastern, Dallas at Minnesota. That's all next Sunday on CBS Sports. Cardinals lined up expecting an onside kick from the Rams. And Zendejas line drives it down the field. Taken on a bounce by Blunt inside the 15. And he follows the crowd out to the 30. They'll mark him out of the 32-yard line. Mitchell Price giving credit for the tackle on special teams for Los Angeles. Are you surprised that they didn't try the onside kick? Yes, I am. I thought surely they would. You got to try, you know, you got to try to do something, get back in the game and keep telling your team about how you got to fight and stay in the game and do everything you possibly can, even though it's kind of one sided. But uh, I think you still have to try for the outside kick. So with 4.59 remaining, Burline and company with the ball on a 28 point lead. They'll begin at the 32. Burline today, 13 out of 24, for 231 yards and a touchdown. Moore has scored four today. Thrown for a two yard loss. Now for an NFL Today report. Let's go to Greg Gumpel in New York. All right, Sean, at Joe Robbie Stadium, the Giants well on their way to a 9 and 3 record. Keith Hamilton breaks through the block, nails Steve DeBerg for the safety in the end zone. It's now 19 to 7. Giants with the lead, less than four and a half to play in the game. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Greg. The Giants keep. Rolling right along. Some thought when Mike Sherrard went down, the offense appeared a little bit stagnant. That might be the thing that derailed the Giants. Not today. Yeah, the Dan, Dan Reeves has really done a remarkable job with that team. I guarantee you that. Four. They keep it on the ground. He pulls out to the 34. Of course, Dan Reeves wasn't the first choice to be the coach of the Giants. They talked to Tom Coughlin at Boston College. Dave Wanstead, who wound up with the Bears. Well, he can marry the owner, says he. Vince Lombardi wasn't the first choice of the Green Bay Packers either, and that worked out pretty well. Yeah, it doesn't make it who the choices were. The guy's the most important is who's coaching here now. And he's done a terrific job. Houston has won seven in a row. Bobby Abier threw six interceptions. Mike Jackson, two touchdowns in Cleveland's win. Pittsburgh held on. Another narrow loss for New England. They've had a season much like the Phoenix Cardinals. Most of their defeats have been by a touchdown or less. Burline deep over the middle and caught again. Gary Clark having a huge day. Again, the catch came at the expense of Wyman Henderson. And that's in the Rams territory at the 47-yard line. Good timing pattern right in the middle area. Clark goes down and goes inside. Burline delivers it right where it had to be thrown. Look at it again, good time to throw the ball, steps in the pocket, good lane to throw the ball. He leaps up into the air, makes that catch. Eighth catch of the day for Clark. 156 yards and a touchdown for Gary today. Four-time pro bowler who helped Washington the two Super Bowl victories. Moore. Greg. Linebacker Thomas Pumko along the ride and made it to the 42. Ticking down toward the two minute warning with Phoenix on its way to its fourth win. Talked a little bit about it earlier, but those those backs, boy, you got to tackle them low if you're going to knock them down. If you don't, you try to tackle them high, they're going to pull you for some yardage and make extra yardage on the play. It's happened consistently in this game this afternoon, have it? Mm -hmm. Good day for both Moore and Bettis. A much better day for Moore's team. On 28 carries, 120 yards rushing, and four touchdowns. At the two minute warning, it's Phoenix 38 and the Rams 10. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and this CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Phoenix Cardinals and the National Football League is prohibited.
Cardinals trying to run out the clock. With the two-minute warning, they lead 38 to 10. You have to be impressed with the way the offensive line of the Cardinals play this afternoon. More yardage for Ron Moore. He's close to a first down. At the 36-yard line, that gets Phoenix over 380 yards in total offense today. And last week, the 49ers had 539 yards of total offense against the Rams. With all the injuries, the Rams having a tough time on defense. Yeah, they really had a tough time this afternoon. That was probably the strength of their team coming into the game. And uh, in the league, they were averaging, they were 16th in the league against the run. Uh, but uh, from an overall pass run standpoint, they were very, very ineffective. One bright note for the Rams that Sean Gilbert was able to return to the game after being injured earlier. And now Burline will take a knee. And the Rams obviously won't bother using any of their timeouts. Five seconds remaining. So Joe Bugle will have at least four more games. And TJ Rupley will have perhaps four more opportunities to demonstrate that he could be the quarterback of the Rams next year. But today didn't help his cause. It did help Bugle's cause. Yeah, he was very unimpressive in this game this afternoon. No question about that. Gary Clark, one of the stars, and there were several for Phoenix. He had eight receptions. Ron Moore rushed for four touchdowns and over 100 yards. And Joe Bugle, very well liked among his peers in the NFL, accepts the congratulations of Chuck Knox. And there'll be no tears from Keith Rucker this week. The final score, the Phoenix Cardinals 38, the Los Angeles Rams 10. We'll return to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, right after this on CBS. Welcome back to Sun Devil Stadium. Steve Berline and Jim Everett renewing their acquaintance following the 38 to 10 victory for Phoenix. An impressive day for Phoenix. They kind of demonstrated what they've been saying all along that perhaps they're a better football team than their record would indicate. And the Rams really struggled. Yeah, they really did. And of course, they played you know, everybody to a man on the Phoenix team said yesterday that we're a better team than the, the record indicates we are. And we're going to prove it the next five games. They got a good start on the five games. Good day for a number of the Cardinals. Burline passed for 250 yards. Clark, eight catches and a touchdown. Moore, 126 yards rushing and four TDs. The bright spot for Los Angeles, that man, Jerome Bettis, who rushed for 115 yards on 16 carries. Now for Hank Stram, Sean McDonough saying so long from Sun Devil Stadium. Phoenix beat the Rams 38 to 10. Stay tuned for the postgame show with Greg and Terry right after this.